Hello everyone, uh, I was due to be pike fishing uh, with Sam Pitcher today on Chew Valley Lake but uh, it's 20 mile per hour winds and we decided to cancel and uh, head off to the Somerset levels to do a bit of pike fishing there instead. We thought we'd stick to the fly fishing theme so we'll be seeing plenty of these today. It's on the exchange ticket offered by Froome and District Angling Association. If you've not seen it, the um, club, is it club mate or club pal um, do these exchange ticket systems between all the clubs down here. So excellent value for money, well worth a look. Um, and I've got some home tied flies that I'm going to give a, a try. Uh, fly lines, airflow, sniper, that's the uh, Barrio uh, Predator line. These haven't seen daylight for over a year, I think, over two years probably. Um, it's um, just coming up to the end of the river season, so the pike will be thinking about spawning now. A mess, we'll have to sort that out later. And even though I'm fly fishing, there's still a chance of a deep hooked fish, so I'll take the cutters on cutters. And always take a hook sharpener. 50 pound uh, fluoro attached to 40 pound um, American fishing wire. It's a venue I'm not familiar with so I start off with the dive three and what I think is a fulling mill perch imitation fly. Because of the Environment Agency's almost paranoid flood prevention strategy on the Somerset levels, the water is extremely low, probably two to four foot deep in most places. The fly is very buoyant, so I can fish it slow and suspended, but very close to the bottom. After a couple of fruitless hours and covering plenty of water, uh, we pause for thought and assess the situation. How do you think that went, Will? Do you think we'll catch? No, 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 just being fed. In a nice warm bed. You enjoying yourself? Yeah, it's nice. Good. It's just knocks <laughs> me out, isn't it? That's what you think? Just enjoying the elements, all good. Do you think? It's a winner, chicken dinner. We're just not very cool, bugger off. And it is done. What length leader you got on? Quite short, actually. What, not seven foot? No, because I, I don't think there's any Herculean casts required. I think it's just the to the opposite bank, let it swing round. So and what if I put a four foot on? Yeah, I'm probably only fishing about oh, yeah. five, five foot. Using a shorter leader means we can get the fly down quickly, which is important on such a narrow channel. It also means we've got more control of the fly uh, when we're casting in such heavy wind. Excited after getting my first take of the day and missing it, I slow my retrieve down, only to snag and not only lose my leader, but my connector too. This forces a switch from the Shakespeare Agility 10 weight to my 8 weight backup rod that's loaded with the bar Barrio Predator line. With a darkening sky and disturbed surface, I choose the bulkiest, brightest fly I can find in my box, which catches the wind and sits up too high in the water. Not wishing to change it, I slide a 3 gram tungsten Cheb weight over the loop connection and reattach the fly. The knot in the loop prevents the cheb from sliding up the trace and the extra weight creates a nice suspended jig action. Then this happens. My concern is that my net is probably going to be too small.
quite a lot of shouting like a banshee. But I managed to land it on my own. Right, let's get the un unhooking stuff sorted. I can't get down there, shall I? Because it makes my stability. I'll bring it up. Oh, yes! Bloody hell, mate! <laughs> oh, beauty. my goodness. <laughs> Hold on, Charlie, what's your PV? Oh, my PV, I think it's 15. On the fly? That's, that's, uh, I want to say that's bigger than 15. I'm going to go to 16. Uh, Will, yeah. no pike in here, mate. <laughs> I hate pike fishing. <laughs> uh, uh, to be fair, um, we were all getting a bit nagged out. Um, we fished the other side of the bridge and it was not really happening. It was quite shallow. We came this side and I walked past Charlie and he said that he'd had... It had a follow. Um, he said it had had a follow, so I went up and then heard this woohoo, and um, we thought it just caught a pike, but we didn't realise it caught a crocodile. That is a nice fish. Come fishing in the rain, they said. You'll catch loads of pike, they said. Well, it's not been easy, but this makes up for it. Absolutely, mate. Look at it has wow. engulfed it. The size of that. Nice, okay, well easy. There you go. Well, so that's my home tide with a uh, Tungsten 97 chip on the front. It's important to get it down a bit deeper. Oh, it's like the polaroid. Charlie, have you got scales? Yeah. <laughs> well done, mate. That is, I am made up. Oh, it's quite unusual how that's pod goes like that. I think, I think 18. 18 and a half. Yeah, got it. <laughs> what did you say it was? 18. You're well off. Talk to me your thoughts and things at the moment, Charlie. That's a new classic, that's a new PV. And it's on the fly as well, which is good. Yeah, that's what, uh, that is you actually awesome. You can be swapping out at 2 Valley Lake. That, that's yeah, exactly yeah. Good. Yeah, we could have been. Nice, good girl. Whee! This is off, that is superb. Boys, by the excitement, we flogged it out for the rest of the day, but to no avail. It's the end of the river course season in a couple of days time and I expect the pike are thinking about spawning so I'm happy to leave them to it. Uh, my next vlog will probably be at Langors Lake, again pike fishing uh, from the kayak. I uh, hope you enjoyed the vid, if you did please consider subscribing, even if you didn't consider it anyway because it helps support fish wish projects where we get new anglers and disadvantaged anglers out fishing. Um, see you next time, cheers for watching.